Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me on my talk on our newly developed Lego compatible satellite IoT modem, also called Spy Crime in Space. I'm Sheila Christensen, and I'm the CEO and co founder of Space Tech Denmark. So let's start with the issue. As we all know, the global satellite communications market is set to gain huge momentum from the high demand for small satellites in a wide range of sectors, such as oil and gas, energy, agriculture, and earth observation, just to name a few of the obvious. As per a recent report from this July, the SATCOM market size was 23 billion US dollars last year and grew to over 25 billion dollars this year. It is projected to grow at an even faster rate than that. And in 2028, it is projected to be at over 46 billion dollars. The question is, can we as a society, as developers and engineers, keep up with the demands of the industry? And how do we prepare for this growth? Because the SATCOM industry and society are interdependent. The SATCOM industry supplies technical solutions for our society that we're dependent on. And in turn, society is supposed to supply the SATCOM industry with interested and skilled professionals that meets the industry demands. Now we run into a problem if we as a society cannot keep up with the demands. So we need to spike the interest and understanding for SATCOM and the general public, not only to have more SATCOM professionals in the future, but also so the rest of society, politicians, lawyers, etc., have the right knowledge to support and utilize it. The best way to do that is by teaching it in schools from an early age, so it becomes general knowledge. So we need an educational tool and educational materials to help our teachers teach SATCOM. We set up the objectives of the activity, of course, to include stimulate interest for space engineering and SATCOM in schools and develop a SATCOM module prototype integrated into an existing ecosystem, um, educational ecosystem, and to execute a pilot activity with the prototype and a group of school children while simulating a complete space mission from idea to execution. The mission that the children ended up doing was um, they built a SATCOM enabled Lego rover that could collect both uh, outdoor and indoor uh, climate data, basically environmental data. And then we sent the rover to a remote location so to simulate a real space mission. The educational environment that we chose to integrate our satellite IoT modem into ended up being Lego Education Spike Prime. Spike Prime is a spin-off of Lego Mindstorms and is similar in the way that you build your Lego rover device, uh, robot, whatever you want to build, and then you also can make, make a, a program for your rover afterwards. You can program in either Scratch, which is like a visual block programming, or you can program in MicroPython. Now, we also needed to select a SATCOM system to be able to transfer the data back to the classroom for analysis. And for that, we chose Lacuna Space. Lacuna Space's SATCOM system is designed and optimized specifically for the use of IoT. And because of the choice of radio technology and frequency, it allowed for some unique features. Most notably, a small low power modem, a relatively small antenna integrated into the device, and on top of that, it's also compatible with LoRaWAN. As you can see in the picture, it's a complete modem with an electronics board on the bottom, a small battery, and a satellite antenna mounted on top of the board. The modem is based on a microcontroller, which, in addition to carrying out the modem functions, can be programmed for additional tasks, such as data collection and processing, or calculating when the satellites are within range. The modem is also equipped with a GNSS module, various sensors for environment and motion, and of course a radio module and antenna. It also has standard interfacing for connecting additional sensors for, for future development. Um, the modem is connected to the Spike Prime hub through a serial connection. Now, during the pilot, it was only possible to access the serial part of the Spike Prime hub and thereby communicating with a satellite modem from MicroPython. But for the end product though, it will be possible to program the SATCOM modem from the scratch programming environment also. We feel that this is an essential step to make um, a SATCOM truly able to be included in all uh, general classroom education. So we did all that and we partnered with LEGO and um, we got a pilot study group together at a school in Denmark and we were able to complete a full space mission. We called it the Perseverance of Danish School Children 
inside internally because um, it was the same year last year that Mars Perseverance landed on Mars and like we told the children you are basically doing the same steps as a space engineer would in, in real life we are sitting first and talking about the concepts we're designing it throughout um, trying to follow the technology readiness levels and um, we did investigations, we did lab tests, we did field tests, and um, in the end we we also approved it for flight. And we had it uh, sent over to uh, Sega Space Architects Lunark site, which was a analog mission to test the moon habitat in the Arctic over the course of three months. Now, the analog astronauts were supposed to be isolated uh, for three months, but uh, they did get to see one helicopter pilot handing over a Lego rover <laughs> at one point and um, that was our our pilot studies Lego rover. It was really exciting. Uh, we made national news, we got the children excited and uh, the teachers loved it. So all in all, uh, it was a great project. We even got the Danish astronaut to come and talk to the children about uh, what to do and what not to do for the mission descriptions. <laughs> So I wanted to share some of the most amazing moments with you uh, from the pilot study because we not we didn't just succeed in um, teaching SATCOM to school children. We in the process created lots of goosebumps and we had a Lego rover actually fly to the Arctic in a helicopter. And um, yeah, so here is a video of Amelia. She's an eighth grade girl who never thought that she would do any type of programming at all. And she's just realizing that her sensors are working exactly the way that they're supposed to. I'm cool. I have heard of a genius. I'm a cool. And yeah, she's saying it in Danish, but I'm sure you understood that she's saying, I, this is so cool. I feel like such a genius. Um, and I can't explain to you the effect that it had in in the in the environment that we were we were coming to to teach in i mean we had 35 children we had a group of teachers and but we also had lots of people from the school that weren't in, involved in the project coming and sticking their heads in all the time and we had uh, news reporters come by like i told you we had the the astronaut come by we also had the analog astronauts come by and talk about their moon habitat and what how much floor space there was inside the habitat so that the children could collect the data that they needed to, to make meaningful scientific missions. So here is the video of the helicopter about to land at the site, and you can see how remote the area is and that we definitely needed SATCOM here to, uh, to, re to retrieve the data. Also, keep in mind, like a real space mission, they had limited energy resources and heat, obviously the same as energy, but um, definitely limited communications and energy resources. So yeah, you can just get to see the two uh, analog astronauts running out to to receive the the lego package he was there for about 30 seconds and they took off again i believe they had about 15 minutes of daylight during this time of year and um yeah regulations for flying in the arctic are quite difficult so after all that positive feedback and seeing all the interest that there came from different entities both from schools um uh, students, uh, the Danish Ministry uh, of Science and Higher Education, um, even the Danish astronaut thought it was cool. <laughs> we, we decided that our device was ready for productization and it's ready for a real mission. So we were happy when the Danish delegation or the Danish space delegation contacted us and asked us if we uh, minded that it was included on uh, Andreas Mogensen's next mission to the International Space Station. The idea is that um, we will roll out a national school competition that will include all public schools in Denmark and the winning team will get their rover or service module uh, with Andreas Mogensen to the International Space Station on his next mission. 
um, it will collect the data while in space and send all the data back to our ground stations and uh, all the participating schools will receive the data uh, for analysis. So um, that was an exciting project and uh, I hope soon the rest of the world can replicate it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I'd like to say thank you to our partners, of course, uh, European Space Agency, Lacuna Space, for providing the SATCOM, Space Exploration Denmark, which is now rolling it out as a national competition, and of course, Sega Space Architects that provided us with a meaningful mission. Thank you very much.